We're going to begin writing an argument essay soon about sled dog racing. So you're going to end up taking a stance and deciding whether you are for or against sled dog racing, but first we need to gather some information about it. So that is where this article comes in. Um, I would like you to read this article and get some good information about sled dog racing so that you can get some good evidence to back up your claim, whether you are for dog racing or against it. So please follow along as I read this article. Um, if you feel free to print it off, feel free to take notes, feel free to highlight um, important things that you find along the way. Sled dog racing. Humans have been domesticating dogs for thousands of years, not only for their companionship, but also to do important jobs. For example, sled dogs have been used for transportation in the Arctic for thousands of years. Eventually, the sport of sled dog racing emerged. Sled dog racing is a popular sport in Alaska. It is also popular in northern border states of the U.S., in Canada, and even in places such as Norway, Greenland, and Australia. There are three typical types of sled dog races, sprint, mid-distance, and long distance. Sprint races cover relatively short distances of 4 to 25 miles per day in 2 to 3 days. Mid-distance races cover a total of 100 to 300 miles, and long-distance races cover 300 miles to more than 1,000 miles. The most famous sled dog race is the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, which starts every year on the first weekend of March. In this sled dog race, mushers and their teams of 12 to 16 dogs cover a distance of approximately 1,000 miles on the Iditarod National Historical Trail from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska. The race typically takes 9 to 17 days to complete. The trail has many twists and turns, hills, steep banks along deep gorges, long stretches across the tundra, frozen rivers, dirt and boulders protruding through the snow, and high mountain passes, making for one of the most grueling competitions ever. Although temperatures have been getting warmer in March over the years in Alaska, the high temperatures typically range from about 10 degrees Fahrenheit to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and the lows range from about negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures vary from year to year and even from day to day. It also depends on where you are on the long and varied trail. Wind is also a factor. It may get very windy at times, making it feel even colder than it actually is. For example, in 1973, the year of the first Iditarod race, the wind chill hit 130 degrees below zero. Blizzards can also pop up unexpectedly. Too much snow is challenging, but even too little snow can be an issue. Sled dogs perform best when the temperatures are around zero degrees and when the snow is fluffy. If the temperatures get too much higher above 30 degrees, the dogs may overheat or injure their paws on the bumpy terrain where the snow has melted or has become slushy. Not only is sled dog racing a test of endurance, but it is also a battle against the elements. Two trails are used for the Iditarod Trail sled dog race. One gets used in even numbered years and the other gets used in odd numbered years. Having two trails allows small villages along the route to have to deal with the impact of a large group of mushers, press, and volunteers only every other year rather than every year. It also allows the race to pass through more villages, including the ghost town of Iditarod. The northern trail is 1,112 miles and the southern trail is 1,131 miles, although the actual portion used for the race is around 975 to 1,000 miles and varies from year to year depending on conditions. There are 26 to 27 checkpoints during the race, places for teams to get food, veterinary care, and rest. The race is not over until the last musher has reached Nome and is off the trail. The trails were created in 1908. Before airplanes and snowmobiles, dog sleds were the main form of transportation in many areas of Alaska. Native inhabitants, indigenous to the region, such as the Eskimo and Inuit, had been relying on them for many years. The need for the trails became especially apparent 
when many settlers came to mine gold in the area during the gold rush in the late 1890s and early 1900s. The network of trails from Anchorage to Nome were originally used as mail routes, connections between Indian villages, supply delivery routes, a way for priests, ministers, and judges to reach people in remote villages, and life-saving highways. In 1925, an outbreak of the deadly disease diphtheria struck Nome and surrounding communities and threatened to become an epidemic. The portion of the trail that leads to the final destination of Nome was originally used by emergency responders to get critical medical supplies to the village. Sled dog teams delivered the life-saving diphtheria anti-serum. Pages don't want to... It takes approximately 9 to 17 days to complete the most famous annual race. The first winner in 1973 took 20 days to complete the race, but since then, mushers and their dogs have improved their skills, equipment, and veterinary care, gaining more speed over the years. The winner gets a prize that varies from year to year. In 2012, the winner received $50,400 and a new truck. The other contestants do not go home empty-handed. Subsequent finishers received a little less money, decreasing from $46,500 for second place, $42,900 for third place, down to $1,500 for 30th place, while each additional finisher receives $1,049. Additionally, everyone gets smaller prizes. The race in 1973 had 22 mushers, whereas the race in 2012 had 66 mushers. Mushers usually come from Alaska, although people from all over the world have been contestants. Not just any dog can be a sled, sled dog. Sled dogs must be driven, hardy, and athletic. They must have the willingness to make it to the finish line. Some dogs have more desire and willingness to race than others. Sled dogs must not only have strength and speed, but also a good attitude. They must be team players. Sled dog teams must, sorry, sled dog teams have leaders. Mushers raise the dogs together and will watch to see which dogs truly want to lead and which dogs are more hesitant to lead, but are happy to follow. The dogs communicate with each other non-verbally. Their body language, bristling of the hair, arching backs, ear movements, showing of the teeth, tail movements, and laying down with paws in the air are all as telling as growling and barking. When mushers bring puppies into the group, the older, more experienced dogs will reprimand them if they are not focusing or are barking too much and will put their noses to the puppy's noses to tell them they are doing a good job. Puppies typically reach the important milestone of getting harnessed for the first time when they are six months old. Originally, Alaskan Malamutes were most often used as sled dogs, while today the Alaskan Husky is the most popular breed. Sled dogs must be healthy and well prepared for the race. During the race, mushers mu must carefully observe the dogs to see if they are tired, hungry, or injured, and look for signs of not wanting to keep going. Dogs that are pushed too hard can become seriously injured or sick, even to the point of death. The musher must complete the race with at least six dogs on the tow line pulling the sled. Therefore, a musher can remove a dog that should no longer be in the race. Any dogs displaying aggressive behavior may be withdrawn from the race. Sled dogs must continue to stay healthy during the race. Dogs must have a thick coat to stay warm. Generally, sled dogs are very comfortable in the cold temperatures and will heat up quickly when running. However, when temperatures drop below zero, dogs wear jackets and booties. Mushers are required to carry at least eight booties for each dog, which are protective no matter what the temperature. Mushers may even provide massages and paw rubs. Dogs must get plenty of rest. Their diet is also important. They must get plenty of protein and fats from dry dog food, fish, and a variety of meats in order to provide the immense amount of energy needed to pull a sled. Racing dogs may consume as many as 10,000 calories a day during the Iditarod race, but less than 2,000 calories on non-racing days. Of course, they need plenty of water, too, not the frozen kind. Throughout the year, many mushers provide the dogs the best diets in optimum quantities in order for them to remain athletic, not too skinny, and not overweight. Mushers also require their dogs to do rigorous training throughout the year. Additionally, each day of the year, many mushers are known to treat their dogs with a lot of love, affection, and care. 
According to some passionate mushers, sled dogging is a lifestyle, not just an event. It is a lifetime pursuit of excellence. So what we're going to do next, um, next class period is I'm going to have you begin working on taking your stance um, with the argumentative essay. So you're going to have to decide, is it okay for dogs to be um, sled dog racing dogs or is it not okay? Are dogs treated um, well enough when, they're, when they are a sled dog or are they mistreated? So that is something that you're going to have to decide and that will be your topic for your argument essay.